Hey, this is Frozen Fresh with an Epson tutorial. To clarify, this is not how to use Epson, but how to use it better. Now, if you click this video because you can't get Epson to work for you, don't worry, it's still in beta, you're just too alpha. Drink some soy milk like these guys and watch their tutorials, I'll link it down below. Now, for the rest of you, you're in the right place. This reduces your work by 50%. Maybe I'm just an idiot, you all know this, but I didn't realize you could do this until I was literally halfway done my second animation. So to clarify, instead of starting on frame one and synthing forwards, synthing forwards, start on frame 20 to 30, then synth forwards and backwards. Estimate the frame based on your experience or when it usually messes up. For example, let's say you had 120 frames to do a scene. Instead of synthing frame 1, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, six frames in total, you synth on frame 20, 60, and 100. It's only three frames and half the work, and the animation looks way more consistent. Tip number two, record optimally. Most important is good lighting. Shadows are the bane of absinthe. Have a good contrast between the subject and the background. Also minimize background clutter. Minimize the subject overlapping itself. Epson gets confused and it's more work. Touching the edges of the scene with the subject is okay unless the part of the subject's body is moving. Epson is fine with losing visual information but cannot gain it. Turning sideways is fine but not turning forwards. So action shots are fine. What I recommend is to record slowly and speed up the animation afterwards. So here's an example with all these put together on how to do it right and how to do it wrong. So this first clip, the lighting is bad. The body is crossing over and there's a motion blur. This would be a horrible scene to try to animate. Now this one, is way better because the lighting is good, the body doesn't cross over itself, and there's lots of spots uh, during the animation that don't have motion blur. Like tip number three, draw optimally. I hope to God none of you are using paint. If you are, you might have a touch of the tism. I'm a bit artistic myself. Use hotkeys. Regardless of what program you're using, you want to be using as many hotkeys as you can. This will speed up the process. Your left hand will be on the keys. Your right hand will be drawing constantly. So here's a quick example of me doing it. And it honestly speeds it up so much. Draw on good frames. This one should be obvious, but draw a frame that has minimal to no motion blur with a clear image and eyes and mouth being open. Draw as thick and accurate an outline as you can without it looking bad. This really helps absence and tracks where everything is. I can't stress enough how important this is. If your frame messes up in just one place, like only the hands or only the face, just redraw the area, not the whole frame. Way less work. Don't always redraw. If the animation messes up for a few frames, no one will really notice or care. It can even look trippy. Just don't let this occur too much. Draw large backgrounds. When you make your backgrounds, make it bigger than you think it should be. This way you can zoom in on different parts and it'll look like many different backgrounds, but also it adds a sense of cohesion. Honestly, this part you're nearly done. So grab whatever stimulates you, perhaps music, Adderall, coffee, 
Personally, I have no problem with drugs, but Coke is where I draw the line. Reuse assets. If you animated someone walking or looking at something earlier in the video, you can very easily get away with reusing it. You can speed it up, slow it down, invert it, zoom in on it, change the background or the lighting. Perhaps you made a background on another video, change it mildly or just reuse it as is. If you find yourself a few frames short of where you wanted to animate a scene for, make a few frames randomly in the middle last for two frames and stretch the first and last frames as much as you need to. It won't be noticeable. Use still frames. Occasionally have a scene that is just a single frame. You can add life to it by panning the image, adding effects, or adjusting the lighting. It will sit fine with the rest of the animation. I literally do this once or twice every video. One thing you can do as well is record the audio and then put it over a still image and put a moving mouth image that alternates every few frames. Animation loops. This probably should have been early in the video because I know your attention spans are probably going, unless of course you took that Adderall. Basically any motion that repeats, you can animate in loop. Use still characters. If they're not the focus, there is no reason to animate characters standing by in the shot when the focus is on a different character. If you really want to, put them in with an animation loop, but no one is going to notice, even though I spent four hours on this part. Rule number five, subscribe to the channel. If you want to, you don't have to. Frozen Fresh, out. <laughs>